My name is Brian Humphreys, and I have the pleasure of working for the Ohio Pork Council. I want to thank everybody for being on today. I know you all didn't come here to, to listen to me talk, but wanted to give a, a quick introduction. The, the program you're on is a virtual field trip that was created by the Ohio Pork Council, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without our, our partners in the industry. And so we wanted to just make sure we mentioned Farm Credit Mid-America, Ohio Soybean Council, and Car Deal. Uh, without their support financially to, to buy the equipment and, and, and work with the producers here, we wouldn't be able to do this. But y'all didn't come here to listen to me talk. Uh, and so I want to take a moment and introduce Phil Horde. And Phil is one of our pig farmers uh, from North Central Ohio. And he's going to spend a little bit of time talking about his operation and what he's got going on there. And afterwards, what we're gonna do is have Phil talk for a little bit about his farm, and then we're gonna go through every classroom and ask for a few questions from every classroom. So if, you all, uh, if all you kids wanna be very well behaved, I'm sure your teachers will pick out the best behaved students to, to come up and ask questions in front of everybody. So with that, Dan, I think I'll turn it over to Phil. Phil, take it away, my friend. Awesome. Uh, how's everyone doing today? So my name is Phil. Um, we are in my pig farm today. So you can see we have uh, some pigs behind me in the pen here. Um, these pigs are about 55 pounds. Uh, that's how much they weigh. Um, in this farm, we have pigs that are mainly uh, just came here, and this is where they spend their time. This is where they, they have all their food and their water, and, and this is the, the barn that's specifically made for them. So. We'll, uh, we'll go from there. Would you like me to share a little bit more, Brian? Yeah, Phil, if you don't mind, yes. talk, uh, talk a little bit about your family and your operation, and, and how long have you worked on the farm, Phil? Yeah, so uh, I've worked on the farm since I was probably your guys' age uh, there. Uh, my family has uh, been farming for over 100 years uh, in Ohio, and so... Um, I recently, I went to, to college and I graduated and I've been back working full time uh, with my family at our farm for about three years now. Great. So one of my main jobs uh, every day is to make sure that the pigs at this particular farm are doing uh, really, really good. So we've got, um, we've got some special things that we're doing uh, with these pigs. We're kind of watching uh, their, their food and their water and so I can kind of help explain and show you guys some of that stuff here in the barn. So uh, we have some, some really cool things here at the farm that, uh, that help us with the pigs every day. So you can see over here we have the feeder. So you can see some pigs here are actually eating. This is where uh, every day they, they get up and they can have food any time of the day. So I don't know about you, but that would be really cool to have food anytime I wanted it. So they can come over here and uh, basically what they do is stick their mouth in the trough and they can just eat however much food they want. Um, I'll get some of the food out and I can kind of show you a little bit closer, closer what it looks like. Um, but it's just uh, mainly made up of corn and soybeans and um, has some, some vitamins and minerals in it. And we basically just grind it up so that it's easier for the pigs to eat. And so that's, that's what they eat. It's a, a special food that we make for them uh, just for their size of pig. So uh, maybe once I'm eating, I get a little bit thirsty. And so once I do that, I can come over here to uh, the water. And you guys can see here that this little, uh, this little nozzle here, I just stick my, uh, my mouth on it and I pull it and some water comes out there. So. Great. And Phil, what are the, the holes in the floor there? We don't have those. In yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, I don't have them in my house either. You guys probably don't have them in your house. So essentially what happens when the pigs uh, go to the bathroom, all of the, the manure uh, falls through the cracks so that um, it doesn't uh, sit there and lay in the pen, but rather it, it falls down into the cracks and then... Uh, when we go to put the fertilizer on the fields, we can actually just use that manure as natural fertilizer from the pigs. So it's really, really cool that 
um, it collects underneath the four there, and then we were able to get it out from there. And, and you use that to, to grow corn and soybeans, Phil? Yep. Yeah, the manure on our farms is used back. It's, it's a really cool thing if you guys were talking about, like, sustainability or environmental um, kind of upkeep. We were able to use the manure from the fields to continue to grow more to feed the animals. So it's a really cool cycle that we're able to use to uh, growing food for the pigs. Yeah, actually, Phil, if you don't mind taking a break, Dan, I think you have a you have a slide that shows that. That'd be fantastic, and maybe we can explain that a little better for everybody here. So we'll switch over and, and show you what we're talking about. So this is is Phil on his farm, uh, and if we we scroll down a couple, we've got one uh, talking about uh, the food and how it's uh, produced there. That's a yeah. There we go. So. This is what, what pigs eat, and you'll see up here uh, on the, the left-hand side, uh, corn. That's what corn in the field looks like. And then on the other side, on the right there, you'll see soybeans, and that's what they look like in the field. And so what Phil was saying is they take the, the manure from those pigs and use it to help grow the corn and soybeans. So if you all have a garden at home or a lawn at home, and sometimes your, your parents or somebody else might come in and put down what's called a fertilizer. It helps the, the, your, your garden or your grass grow uh, more uniform and, and give it all the food that the plants need. And, and that's what the manure does here. And so then Phil will harvest that corn and soybeans that you see there and grind it up into the feed that he was showing you earlier. And farmers were some of the original recyclers. So in your classrooms or at home, you, you may have recycling bins um, and we do the same thing here on a, on a really big farm, so uh, on, a, on a bigger scale. So, Phil, uh, you, you, showed the, uh, you, you showed the whole barn there. Maybe you could tell the, the kids how many pigs are in this barn. Yeah, so at this farm, we have about 2,000 pigs that are in this farm. The building is really long. I'll, I'll kind of show you guys. You can see it. It's, it's pretty long, but um, in this farm, we actually can bring uh, the fresh air for the pigs um, through the roof. So there's air inlets on the end and we bring the air down through. And then there's fans that are actually pulling the air through the side. And so we're constantly giving the pigs fresh air in the barn. Um, in the summertime and probably even later today, uh, this barn has a, a curtain at the end, we call it. And the curtain will actually go down and then the, all the fans on the other end will start up, and then it'll kind of create a tunnel of air, and it'll be a really cool air for the pigs um, coming through, and it's, uh, it creates a, a wind. At this farm in the summertime, we also have something uh, we can use uh, as far as a, a sprinkling system, and uh, that's where the, the pigs, uh, we can actually spray some water on them in the summer to help cool them down. So that's a cool thing we have at this farm as well. Dan, do you think anybody in these classrooms run through, runs through a sprinkler on a hot summer day? I bet a, a few of these kids do the same thing. And, and we, Phil is saying he does the same things for his pigs when it gets too warm out. He turns a sprinkler system on like you guys would run through in your classroom. Yeah, I see some hands up there. They run through sprinklers. So, so he's saying he does the same things for his pigs to help keep them cool. How about in the summer, Phil? Does it get does it get or in the winter? Does it get really cold in that barn like it does outside? No. Oh, one of the nice things about keeping my pigs in the barn here is that uh, there's actually heaters, so we can walk down. We'll just take a little trip down here to the next few pens here, and I can show you that we have some heaters in the farm. So that big square thing there on the wall that's hanging down, that's a heater, and so we we actually heat the barn. For all the pigs in the winter and we keep it in the, the high 60s low 70 degrees so uh, about the same temperature that it's going to be outside today so that's that's what it's like inside the barns during the winter and the pigs don't have to be too cold yeah that's great well Dan, so another yep, go ahead Phil. I was just gonna say I was just gonna mention uh, that one of the, the other things that's nice about having them inside in the winter is that they don't have to be uh, outside uh, if, the, if there's ice or snow or anything like that. We're able to keep that off of them and keep them nice and dry and warm. Yeah. 
Hey, Phil, I think uh, I'm going to ask a, a, a couple more questions of you here, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Miss Deirdre's class in Horizon Science Academy for a few questions. But Phil, are, are you wearing uh, special, special garments in this barn? I know you guys have some barns that you have to do some special things before you can go into. It, are, are you doing that in this barn? Yeah, I'm not wearing something too special, but I'm just wearing some uh, some farmer clothes, and I've got. I'll uh, I'll show you guys some of my my boots that I wear, and uh, they're just things that help uh, help keep the the farm clean. So I only wear these clothes in the barn, and I don't wear them when I go outside the barn. And that way, uh, I try to keep the pigs as healthy as I can. Uh, pigs can kind of spread some germs to one another if we're not careful. So when I come into this farm, I take a, a shower, or I wash my, my hands, and um, and I can put on my clothes that I only wear in this farm so that if I was visiting some other pigs that I won't try to bring any germs to them. Yeah. So, Phil, did I hear you right that you take a shower before you go see the pigs? That's, that's, a, that's different than what some of these kids probably thought, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's very, uh, what, what I really try to do at my farm is keep my pigs as healthy as I can. And so uh, just like when you, maybe sometimes you guys go to the grocery store or um, to uh, somewhere where there's a, a lot of uh, places where you could get germs. Sometimes your mom or your dad might make you wash your hands or use um, some hand sanitizer. Uh, that's because you could pick up other germs from other people. Well, that's the same thing that happens at the pig farm. Um, if I was visiting some other pigs or uh, maybe someone else has some pigs and I, I got some germs from them, I wouldn't want to bring them to my farm because that could actually make my pigs sick. So at this farm and, and at a lot of, of our other farms, we actually take a shower to get and, and wipe off all of those germs before we go in and see the pigs. Yeah, and that, that's great that you, you, you take those kind of precautions just to keep your pigs healthy. I think that, that's fantastic. Phil, I'll ask one more question, then I'm going to turn it over to Miss Deirdre's class at, at Horizon Science Academy there in Columbus. But they, they look like they're just laying down and, and getting something to eat and drink. Is this what they do all day? The pigs? This is what they do all day. This, oh. Yeah, this is a uh, this is pretty typical day. They can... Uh, play around and uh, get some food over at the feeder and then go get some water and then basically eat, sleep, and drink. And that's their, that's my ideal life. I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty fun. So that's what they get to do every day. That's right. And every once in a while we see them playing with each other or flopping around there, don't we? They're, they're still having some fun in there. So. All right. Oh, yeah. If it's okay, I think we'll, uh, Miss Deirdre, if you've got a, a few questions there, we'd love to love to hear from your students. So if they'll step up to the camera and turn the micro, Dan will turn the microphone on, and we'll uh, we'll love to hear your questions. Go ahead. I'm sorry, say that again. Our pigs fast. Phil, he asked, are pigs fast? Yes, they 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 can be very fast, actually. Uh, they can they can run pretty fast. So um, when we're trying to maybe catch one to uh, to look at him or make sure he's growing okay, we can uh, we can usually use a little uh, sort sorting board and we can kind of uh, corral him up into a corner and that's how we can catch them. Um, but yeah, they can jump around and and they they can be fast for sure. Yeah. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Great. Do we have a, another question from uh, from Miss Deirdre's class? I can't quite hear you. you mind uh, speaking a little closer? Sorry. Say it again. I'm sorry. Do pigs normally sleep? No. Do pigs snore when they sleep? Oh, do pigs snore when they sleep? That's a great <laughs> question. Phil, have you ever heard your pigs snore while they sleep? I have not heard. I uh, have not heard a lot of them snore, but. Um, I don't. I don't think that's very common, but I suppose that it could happen uh, if they. Uh, if it depends on the particular pig, that's for sure. Sure, sure. I, I think uh, I, I think I have heard a pig snore, but I, I don't think it's very common. That's a great question, though. Yeah. All right. Do we have a, another question there? We do not. 
Okay, great. We're going to move on to, to the uh, classes from Sharpsburg Elementary. We'll start off with Ms. Jarrell's class. Uh, if there's uh, any questions there, we, we'd love to have them. Uh, come on up to the microphone here in the computer so we can see you. Why did you want to work on a pig farm? Yeah, why did you want to work on a pig farm and with pigs, Phil? That's the, the question. Why did you want to work there? It's a great question. So um, I, I really like working with the animals, and I really um, enjoy uh, seeing them grow uh, nice and big and healthy and um, my family it's kind of a long time been in our our history but uh, there's a lot of different things that pig farmers get to do today other than just taking care of their animals right we have to uh, there's a lot of business things and there's a there's a whole lot of things from you know such as their feed and what we're feeding them and there's a lot of different opportunities that we have on the farm to do different things every day Every day isn't the same. That's true. That's true. That, that's a great question. Do we have some more from Mr. Charles' class? Yes. Great. Come on up. Do you guys have any unique types of breeds or crosses? That's a great question. Phil, she asked if you have any uh, unique types of breeds of pigs on your farm. Yeah, it's a great, great thing you asked. So um, at this farm, this is actually a farm that we are able to research some different types of things for the pigs. And so you might see, if you look really closely, you can see there on the left side, see how that pig has a yellow tag? And you can see the one right in front of us has a blue tag. So they're actually different types of pigs. Um, their breed of pig is actually different. Um, they had their mom... Their moms, when they were born, were, were the same type of pig, but then their dads were different types of pigs. And so you can't really see a big difference, but there is a little bit of a color difference between the two. Um, so, yes, we do have lots of, of different types of breeds, um, specifically at this farm. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. That is a great question. And, and we've had the question before, uh, how many types of breeds of pigs are there out there? And, and there are a lot. There are uh, all kinds of different shapes and sizes and colors of pigs. There, there are red ones and black ones and white ones and white ones with black stripes and the other way. So that's a, a great question. I think we've got time for a couple more questions from Ms. Jarrell's class there, if there's a, another one. How, how big do their litters get? How big do their litters get? That's a fantastic question, Phil. How many, uh, how many pigs are in a typical litter at your farm? Well, first of all, I'm really excited that you used the word litter because that's, that's, what, it's, that's what it's called. So, um, yeah, when they have a litter of pigs, generally what uh, our average number of pigs is about 14 to 15 born to every litter. Yeah, and for Phil, if you don't mind, uh, for for everybody on the on the call, maybe we can explain what a, a litter is. Is that uh, is that when the baby pigs are born, or is that what, what explain a litter maybe? Yeah, great, great thing. So a litter is um, basically a group of pigs that are born to the same mom. Mm -hmm. So if your a dog has puppies, then all of the puppies are born to the the same mom, and that's called a litter too. So. We use the same word for pigs where all of the, the litter, one litter would be all brothers and sisters born to the same mom. That's right. Perfect. That's a, a great question. I think we've got time for one more from Ms. Jarrell's class, and then we're going to move on to Ms. Messerly's class here. Go ahead, sir. How many people work on your farm? Really? That's a great question. Phil, he asked, how many, uh, how many people work on your farm? So at this farm, uh, we would have one to two people that would work here. Um, they would come here every single day, and they come here multiple times a day to make sure that the pigs are, have uh, food and water and that they're doing okay, and they're walking through each and every pen, and they're making sure that each pig is doing good. Um, so at this farm, that's how many people that would work here. Uh, across all of our other farms, we actually have about um, – 200 people that work with us uh, every single day. So 200 farmers that get to, to help us. So that's really, really fun. That's great, yeah. Uh, Dan, if you don't mind, I think we'll turn it over to Miss Messerly's class and see if we have a, a few questions from there. So if we've got a question, let's go ahead and step up to the, the camera and the microphone here. 
Go ahead. I don't think we have sound. It might be Phil. Uh, it might be on mute there. Can we come back to Miss Meshley's class? Maybe we'll move on to Miss Barker's class here and get a couple questions and come back to Miss Meshley's class if we can get the microphone figured out. So for Miss Barker's class, if you've got a question, go on ahead. What is the average lifespan of the pigs on your farm? Yeah, that's a great question. Phil, what's the average lifespan of pigs on your farm? Yep, so these pigs will be, uh, they'll actually be about six months old when they go to market. So right now, these pigs in this farm, they're roughly about 10 weeks old. So they're 10 to 11 weeks old. So they're, they're going to be uh, uh, lots older when they go to market. Obviously, they grow really fast, but it's about six months old when, from the time they're born to the time they go to market. That's right. And, and Phil, actually, I think we have a kind of a slide that we, we showed briefly earlier. But Dan, if you don't mind, maybe it'd be a good time to bring up that slide showing how fast pigs grow. So real quick, pigs, pigs grow really fast naturally. And Phil showed you guys the food that they feed them earlier. And, and there's several different variations on how much corn and how much soybeans and other things they put in there throughout the life of a pig. But you can see here when pigs are born, they weigh about two to three pounds. And at about four weeks old, they're already up to 15 to 20 pounds. And by eight weeks, which would be about two months, they're up to about the size that you're seeing there in Phil's barn now, 40 to, to 60 pounds. And within six months, so about a, a little bit less than your school year would be, uh, they're, they're at 270 to 285 pounds. And, and that's when they go off to, to harvest there. So at six months, the, in six months, they grow up to 270 to 285 pounds, which would be a, a, a pretty good size adult there. So uh, that's, a, that's a great question. That's a great question. Do we have another question from Ms. Marker's class? Go ahead. Um, do you have any other um, animals except for our pigs? Yeah, Phil, that's a, that's a great question. Phil, do you have any other animals besides pigs on your farm? At this particular farm, we do not have any other animals other than pigs, uh, but at another one of our farms, we have some cows. Uh, so uh, some cows and my grandma has a few chickens at her house too, but she, she uses those to get some eggs, but mostly just pigs and cows. Yeah. All right. I think we've got time for maybe two more questions from Ms. Barker's class there. Do you ever let your pigs outside of the barn or do they spend their whole life inside of the barn? That's a great question. We get that one quite a bit. Phil, the, the question was, uh, do you ever let your pigs outside or do they spend their entire life inside of a barn? Yes. So at this farm, these pigs will stay here um, while they're at this particular stage um, in the growing period. Uh, they don't go outside. Um, we bring a lot of the things that they need uh, to, to grow uh, healthy and safely uh, to be inside. So like we were talking about earlier in the summer, um, like we're heading into now, the barns have shade for the pigs so that they don't get sunburned and so that um, they're not out in the sun and, and we have the water that's able to cool them. Uh, we also are able to keep them away from predators. So in the, in the farm la farmland, a lot of times what happens is you have some different predators that actually may think that pigs might be a good, a good snack, and that's obviously not what we want. So we want to keep them nice and safe, so we keep them inside the barn, and that's a, a good thing for year-round. We also talked about in the winter, uh, we're able to heat the barn for them, and that way we're able to keep the temperature really constant for them, and, and that way they're not getting too hot or not too cold. So great question. That is a great question. Yeah, yeah. I think we've got time for one more from Ms. Barker's class, and then we're going to go back and see if we can get the, the classroom from Ms. Messerly's uh, there to work with the microphone. So go ahead from Ms. Barker's class. Are any pigs on your farm used for food? Yeah, that's a great question. So, Phil, uh, she asked if, uh, if, if any of the pigs on your farm are used for food or, or some of them may be used for something else, shows or something. Yeah. So um, there are some pig farmers that have their pigs that are used for show, you know, whether they raise them to, to, uh, to win prizes or to, uh, to grow them that way. But at my farm, we are raising them for food. 
So one of the, the uh, things that we're raising the pigs for is bacon. So one of their products that they're able to give us when we harvest them is bacon. And um, so that might be one of the things that you're familiar with, bacon and sausage and, and pork chops, that kind of thing. Uh, while they're in my farm, I don't like to think of them that way, but at the end of the day, we're, we're raising them to be healthy. Uh, that way they're healthy when they go to be harvested. That's true. That's true. That's a, that's a great question, though, and, and, and sometimes hard for folks to understand that uh, we're, we're raising food for everyone to eat. So that, that's sometimes a challenge to understand when we're looking at the pigs, but that's, that's ultimately where they're going. Great, great, great question there. All right, we're going to go back and try Miss Messerly's class here. So, Dan, if we can switch over to them, let's see. Uh, go ahead. And what's your question? Still no sound there. Give it a second. Are they able to type their question? Yeah, Miss Messerly's class, I think if you uh, want to put that in the chat window, we'll give it a shot there. We're still not getting any sound. We're going to go on now uh, to Miss Zappalo's class from uh, Royal View Elementary in Willow in Willowick, Ohio. Uh, there's, uh, if we've got a couple of questions from there, we'll go ahead and take those. Go ahead if you've got a question. Uh, we're still not getting any sound from Miss uh, Zappala's class there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. What was the question? Did Native Americans use pigs? That's a great question. Phil, do you know the answer to that? Did Native Americans use pigs? <laughs> I am not sure, but uh, it, I'm sure they could have if they had access to them, yes. They, uh, they certainly could have, but pigs were actually brought here uh, by, by Europeans uh, when they came over to visit. Uh, pigs are not actually native to the, to the North American continent. Uh, they're, they're native <coughs> to uh, Europe and parts of Eurasia and other parts. But that's a, a great question, one we don't get very often. And I apologize. I'll try to find the answer before we're done here, but I can't uh, right now remember who brought the pigs here, but I'll try and find that. So uh, do we have a, another question uh, from Ms. Zappos' class? Do pig breeds have hair, and what do they use their hair for? That's a great question. Phil, the, the question was, do pigs have hair, and if so, what do we use the hair for? I'm going to try to zoom really close. Can you guys see the hair on them? Put your hand up if you can see the hair on them. Okay, you guys can see it. So, yes, they do have a little bit of hair on, the, on their back. And their hair is just uh, a short hair. We don't don't really do anything with their hair. We don't don't really brush it or something. But it, it always stays about that length. So it, it, we don't have to really shave them or do anything like that. Their hair from getting tangled just because it's really short and really fine. Yeah, that's a, a great question. That's a great question. Uh, do we have another question from the Zappos class? That's an excellent question. Phil, how can you tell what kind of, what breed of pigs you have there? Yes. So uh, we work with special farms um, to get the, uh, the different breeds of our pigs. So when we work with those farms, we actually are able to know exactly what type of breeds we have. So at my farm, it's actually very important that we have special breeds so that uh, the pigs are able to be healthy, that they are able to, that we're, that we know that we're feeding them the right food and, uh, things like that. So we, we know very specifically what kind of breeds that they are. Um, and, uh, that's, that's a great question. That is a great question. I think we've got a uh, uh, time for a couple more questions here from Ms. Zappalo's class. If, uh, if there's another one there. How long have you had your pigs? Yeah, Phil, how long have you had your pigs there? These pigs just came into this farm about uh, 10 days ago, actually. So these pigs would have came from another farmer's farm. So 
just to kind of give you guys a quick overview. So when these pigs are born, they stay with the, the mama sow for about uh, three weeks. And then we take them from there to another farm where it's called a nursery farm. And that's where the pigs are when they're really small, uh, when they, uh, they grow there for maybe six to eight weeks or so, and then we bring them here. So that's, that's uh, they've only been here for about 10 days or so. Yeah, that's great. I think I've got time for one more question from uh, Royal View Elementary, and then we're going to go back and try Miss Messerly's class one more time for a few questions. So we've got time for one more here. How much will one pig cost? Yeah, Dan, uh, Phil, the, the question was, how much will one pig cost? And I think there's a, maybe, maybe explain uh, at the different stages uh, how that works, if you could. Yes. So when the, the pigs are born, um, they, uh, we put a value on them when they're born, you know, when they're, when they're alive. So at that point, they would be between $30 and $40 per pig. And then um, these pigs here would be uh, upwards of, of, let's just say, an average of $60 or so. And then when they go to market, they're about two or three times that much. Uh, so each, each stage of growth, they keep, keep getting more valuable because if you think about it, we have to feed them food. And every time we feed them food, that costs money and so that's why the pigs keep getting more valuable um, because we have the the cost that it takes to raise them but then obviously they're valuable because they're worth something if we were to sell them when they get older uh, for market and that's a great question and, and nice job answering that one so uh, we'll go back to miss messerly's class do we have a, a question there um can you pick up a pig yeah, that's a great question. So, Phil, he wants to, to know if you could pick one of those pigs up. All right. I should sit down beside one of these because you can see how big they are. But um, they, uh, they're they actually about 55 pounds. So I could, I could uh, pick one up, but it might not be that easy uh, just because they're so big. So you see how big my hand is. You can see how big the pig is here. So I could take them up, but I, it would be kind of difficult to do right now. It might be a little stressful for the pig too, huh, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a great question. We'll, we'll go back to Miss Meshley's class, see if you've got another one. Bye. How do you make bacon? What was the question again? How do you make bacon? Do you make bacon? Sure, Phil, that's a, a great question. Do you want me to take that one, or are you good answering that one, Phil? Um, I can kind of sure. give you the premise of it. So really what happens is that when the pigs are old enough to be sent to the market to be harvested, um, the, the meat uh, packers, the, the people that work in the um, harvest facility that are, that are those uh, workers that take the different cuts of the pig um, off of the, the, the different pieces of meat that we can buy and that's where bacon uh, comes from so we're able to take the bacon uh, is is part of the pig and then they they do some processing to it so they actually are able to cut it into the right shape and they maybe add um, some different flavorings like maybe they smoke the bacon or something like that so they're able to do lots of different things uh, when they get the actual piece of meat from the pig. That's right. That's right. And I make my bacon in the oven, just, just so everybody's clear. We'll go back to Miss Meshley's class here. Did we, uh, do we have a couple? I got time for a couple more questions, and then we're going to switch over to, to West Elementary School. What age, did you what age did you decide to get a pig from? Yeah, so, Phil, what age did you decide to get your pigs? At this farm, we got them when they were uh, roughly about 11 weeks uh, old. So um, I've been actually working, at, working with these particular pigs before they came to my farm. So I started working with them actually while they were still little piglets when they were only, uh, not, you know, not even one day old, I started working with these ones. Great, yeah. Okay, and, and last question from Miss Messerly's class here. 
Did a pig ever try to escape or like you escape a pig pen? Yeah. That that's a, a good question. We get that one once in a while. Phil, do do uh do these pigs uh ever try to escape? They can. Uh they can try. At this farm we actually have the gates that are pretty high, so you can see see how high the gate is. So it's kind of hard for them to escape, but when they get older, when they get a little bit rowdy, you know, if they're playing with each other, they might try to escape. But, uh, but at my farm, I have the gates that are a little bit higher, so to make sure that they stay in their pen. And they've got everything they need there, right? They've got food, they've got water, they're warm in the, in the winter and cool in the summer. They don't, they don't really have a need to, do they? Nope. We try to bring everything to them right to their pen. So that's, that's why they don't need to leave their pen. That's right. That's right. I think I have time for one more question before we switch over to West Elementary School, Miss Ryan's class. So Ms. Uh, Ms. Messerly's class, we got one more question. What do you do with dead pigs? That's a, that's a good question. All right, Phil, what do you do with, uh, with the dead pigs? If, if some of them maybe got sick or something. Yep. So, it's a great question and it's a good thing to remember or to, to realize when it comes to animal farming is that um, unfortunately we can't save every single animal. We try every day to make sure that we're doing our best to try to make sure that each animal is healthy and that there's not any intervention that we need to do. But if one does die at this farm, uh, we have uh, a composting pile. So we're actually able to compost them um, at the farm outside and then uh that's what we do with the, the dead animals mm -hmm. and, and like phil said though the the goal is to keep pigs happy and healthy uh, and as much and as long as possible so you can see there that they've got access to food and water and, and like phil said they're going through the barn several times a day right phil to, to make sure that everybody's happy and healthy and if they're not healthy to to try and get them uh to, to get them the medicine they may need to get better so uh, we'll, we'll switch it over to Miss Ryan's class from West Elementary School in Edina, Ohio. That's a great question. Where, Phil, where is your farm located? Well, I'm actually not too far from you, um, but uh, if you guys know where um, Mansfield, Ohio is, my farm is, is about uh, 25 minutes from there. So. I'm uh, basically, if you if you guys know where Lake Erie is, you know, if you guys ever looked at a map and know where Lake Erie is, I'm kind of uh, just about an hour away from Lake Erie. Great. Next question from uh, Miss Ryan's class. Do you have a favorite pig? Yeah, Phil, do you have a favorite pig? Um, I'm not sure. There's one that uh, we were, so my, my, uh, I have a farmer that helps me in this farm, and her name is Kayla. I don't think she's, I don't see her in here right now, but um, she might be on the other side. But really, um, she has a favorite pig in this farm that we got in, and she just named him Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, great. So. That's a, a great, great question. So, uh, Ms. Ryan, do we, we have a, we got time for a few more questions there if you've got another one. Have you ever won an award for any of your pigs? It's a great question. Phil, the question was, have you ever won an award for any of your pigs? Yeah, so um, we we don't show our pigs at different shows that would maybe be uh, where we could win trophies or something like that. But my farm, um, one of the things we do for raising livestock for food is that we try to be um, – really great uh, uh, numbers as far as like how many pigs that um, we're able to save, um, what kind of things in terms of how much food it takes for them to, to grow and um, things like that. So uh, we try to really hard to make sure that we're, uh, we're doing everything we can to be, to be the best at what we're doing. But in terms of winning any trophies, we haven't really done that. So... <laughs> Yeah, not for the pig specifically, Phil, but di didn't you guys win an environmental stewardship award a few years ago for all the work you do to keep your farms clean and, and environmentally friendly? Yes, yes, we did win that, yep. Yep, so not specifically for the pig, but you have won awards for the, the great work you all do there. So that's a great question. Do we have a, another question for Miss Ryan's class? 
Do you name your pigs? Yeah, Phil, so we know you have one named Charlie Brown in there, but do you have any other pigs named? At this farm, uh, we, don't, we don't name the pigs. Um, as we talked about, there's a lot of them here, so that would take a long time to try to name each, one, each of them and uh, remember all of their names. We could name them all, but it, you know how hard it would be to remember all of their names. Sure. So at this farm and, and these particular pigs, you can kind of see that in their ear, they have a little tag. And so this one, we kind of look at them by numbers. So at this one, you would say that uh, her tag is yellow 829. So we might, Charlie Brown has a tag too, but I can't remember what his number is. <laughs> We've got time for one more question from Miss Ryan's class, if there's another one. What is the normal lifespan of a pig? Yeah, so Phil, the question is, what is a normal lifespan of a pig? And I think we talked about it a little bit earlier, but maybe, uh, maybe readdress that one more time. Yes, so from when, when a pig is born, so like when one of these pigs were born, and then by the time they go to market, it's about six months. Yeah, great. All right, so Dan, we've got time, I think, for a couple more questions. I don't know if anybody has any left, but we, uh, Miss Durrell's class only had a, a few, uh, but I had a, a couple more here. They had actually sent in earlier, um, and the one of the questions from uh, Ezekiel, uh, Phil, was how many pigs do you have on your farm? And I know you talked about how many are in that barn there, uh, but maybe you could talk about your overall farm and, and how many pigs you guys have overall. Yeah, so our, our farm, the way that we do it is that uh, my family has um, farmers that, we, that work with us that help grow the pigs. And so um, the way that we look to, like to look at it is that we work with over 100 families in Ohio um, to help grow our pigs. And each of those uh, families has barns that could be anywhere from, uh, we have one that has a few hundred pigs all the way up to... Uh, to the size of this farm that would be about 2,500 pigs in any of the barns at any one time. So uh, that would be uh, one way of looking at it. The other way is that uh, to look, look uh, at the number of mother pigs. So some of you probably know this just because it sounds like you know a lot of pig terms, but um, a mother pig is called a sow. And so we have actually have um, not all at one place. We have them spread out over uh, different areas and different things, but we have about 28,000 of those mother pigs. Great, yeah. And, and Phil, we just got a great question from Horizon Science Academy that I should have thought to ask earlier. It's a, it's a great question. How many pounds of food does a pig eat in a day? And as we know, when they get bigger, they'll probably eat more. But uh, at this size, do you have any idea what they're eating, uh, how many pounds of food they're eating a day? Yes. Yeah, so they're eating, at this age, they would be eating anywhere from about two to three pounds every single day. Wow. So uh, over, the, over their whole life, um, in, the, uh, in the finishing stage, uh, they would eat, uh, so from when they come to this barn to when they exit, they would eat roughly about 600 pounds of food. Wow. And, and what do they weigh when they're fully grown? Uh, uh, about 280 pounds? That's right. Yep. Yeah. So they're yep. eating quite a bit of food. Quite a bit of food. I, I, Dan, I think we have somebody at Miss Messerly's class in front of the camera there that maybe they have one more question. And then I think we need to get wrapped up here. Hey, what was your question? Um. Okay. So... When you were younger, how long have you wanted to have a pig farm? That's a fan. That's a great question, Phil. The question was when you were how young were you when you wanted to decide you wanted to have a pig farm? Yeah, I uh, I was probably about your age when I started, even younger when I started helping on the pig farms, and so uh, ever since I was really young, I was like, hey, it would be really cool to continue working on and having pigs. So uh, that's kind of when I decided. That's great. And, and I think we need to, to get wrapped up here and we can, uh, happy to take any other questions that, that schools may have via email. Uh, and you're happy to feel free to send any additional questions you have to us and we'll get those answered and sent back to you. But uh, before we go around and, and, and uh, ask for a round of applause, 
I had one last question here that got sent earlier on, Phil, that I just feel I, I have to ask. What is your favorite part of being a pig farmer? I would say my favorite part is being able to see and, uh, and ha uh, touch the pigs every day and see what they're, how they're growing and being able to care for them that way. That's probably my favorite part. I think that's fantastic. I think that's fantastic. Well, I, I think uh, if, you, if you kids don't mind, I'd like to give uh, Phil a round of applause for answering questions and taking time out of the show with his pigs. So, Well, I, I thank you all for your time, and, and to all the instructors, you know how to get a hold of, of Dan Tolan or myself. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to send them over to us. We're, we're happy to answer those. Thank you all very much for your time. This has been a – I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you all enjoyed it and had a great time. Thanks again to everybody, and have a, have a great rest of your day.